This is a bittersweet day for Lima Sr. However, we knew this day would come, but we're kind of hoping it'd be maybe a couple years in the making. Now, whenever there's a change of this magnitude, uh, feelings of disbelief and hurt sometimes overwhelm what the future may hold. I, for one, am very optimistic about what the future holds. Why, you ask? Because of this man sitting to my left. Three years ago, the Lima Senior Athletic Program was struggling to compete in any sport. Enter Coach Fell. The excitement that followed his first season set the tone for where we are today. We have witnessed the change in what it means to be a Spartan, kind of a revival of that Spartan pride. Coach Fell, a Lima guy, has not only had a positive impact on his athletes who play on the football field, but also the Lima City Schools and the Lima community as a whole. The hardest part of this transition is that many of us call Mike Fell a friend, a mentor, and to some, a father figure. We will all miss Coach Fell, and we wish him the best as he escapes the cold temperatures of Ohio to have the opportunity to play golf 365 days a year. So with that, I turn it over to Coach Mike Fell. Hey, that's, uh, that's nice. Nice, John. Um, say that this has been a uh, been a tough day. Tough day with, um, you know, starting out this morning with my football team. And uh, I'm never at a loss for words. You know, I'm, I'm always able to talk through everything. And as uh, my cousin Tony can attest, we, uh, we struggled. And my, and my players struggled. Now, if you, uh, if you coach somewhere, and you just go through the motions when the coach leaves and you tell the players it's it's no big deal you know but you could tell in that room that we had invested something and we had you know we had done some things that you've got to do if it's worthwhile so it made me feel even though i was feeling sad and everything it made me feel good that the young men felt just like i did you know, we have spent, you know, we spent three years. I, uh, I took this job three years ago in March. And, uh, you know, these guys on my left right here, you know, DeMonte Lyles, Boy Boy, Darius, Ruben, those guys, you know, they were, they were the beginning. They were the beginning. They're, they're great athletes. And I go, okay, we've got young men like that. But do we have guys that are willing to come to weightlifting every day and do that kind of stuff? And, and we did, you know, so it was, um, it's a great feeling to have young men buy into what you're talking about and, and what you believe in. So a couple things. First off, I want to thank uh, all you guys in the media. Uh, you know, I'm fortunate that, uh, you know, I call most of you guys my friends. And uh, you know me, I'll talk. I'll tell you pretty much straight out what it is. And I'm not afraid of it. And you guys have treated us tremendous. You know, when you go, one of the reasons I took this job is I lived in Ada, Ohio. And, uh, you know, I couldn't find anything about Lima Senior out when I wanted to find out how they did on the football field. You know, and, and it, I, don't under, I don't blame you. I mean, it, it was one of those things that, you know, it wasn't a big deal, football, basketball, whatever it was. And, um, I wanted it to be front page like it always used to be, you know? And so when I um, got the job, you guys started covering a little bit. And then, you know, we did pretty well. And, you know, Tom Usher came to every game this year. We had three or four games on TV. You know, we were the headline story at, on Friday night. You know, and that was one of the things I, I wanted to accomplish when I got back here. I looked at, uh, you know, Mark Koontz interviewed me three years ago, and he asked me what, you know, what I wanted to do here. Well, these guys right here and those guys over there, you know, that's what coaching football is all about. You know, the relationships you build with these young men. What can you do with them? What, you know, what are their goals for the future? 
can you get them to work together to be a family to accomplish things? And, you know, that's what I remember. You know, that's what I remember on down the road. And today, I had 20 old players text me on the phone and, you know, congratulate me or ask me what I was doing or, or what was going on. You know, I had a chance to talk to my, most of my team individually today. You know, so the relationships you build, that's, that's what it's all about. And, uh, you know, three years, it seems like I've been here 25 <coughs> years. You know, it doesn't, you know, these guys, the, as soon as I got here, we, we had a bond together and we were able to do things. And every coach talks about that, but you know, it, it's legitimate here. Um, these, guys, these guys needed some things. I needed some things, and it, it kind of came together that way. I really appreciate um, Jill Ackerman, and uh, you know Doug Kent was the principal when I got here. Doc Offenbacher was the assistant or the athletic director. John's taken over as the athletic director. Allison's taken over as the principal. But I have had support, and these guys have support every day. Uh, it's a, it's been tremendous, you know. The thing about Lima City, Lima City Schools is it's some, what our goal was, was to keep every young man that grew up in Lima City Schools here and playing for us and in our system. You know, we've had some kids come back who, who love being here. You know, we've had, we've had some kids come over from other schools, but we haven't had any go somewhere else. You know, when they're in junior high now, they're looking and they see the football team scoring 45, 50 points a game, you know, winning nine games, winning state playoff games. And then more than that, they see these guys having fun. You know, sports are supposed to be fun. Sports are supposed to be something that energizes your school, your community. And that's, and that's what these guys were able to accomplish. I've got a great group of coaches. You know, some of my coaches are over there. We had 10 guys. We had 10 guys, Frank Crea, you know, came with me. Jason Wright came over. Wes Schrader, Steve Carter, Justin Hahn, Aaron Markley, Shane Jolly, Brad Davis has helped me out. You know, uh, Randy Woods came over from Allen East. You know, when you're, when you're going well, everybody wants to come coach with you, which is great. Well, these guys are invested in these young men. You know, they, they like being around these guys. They, you know, my wife, my wife is um, someone that gets kind of uh, neglected a long time. She is a, she's a great business lady. She's loved my life. We've been around forever, you know. And uh, when she met these guys, she goes, she goes they're, they're just like all the kids, you know, all the kids you've ever coached. She goes, I, they smile. They're, 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 they're happy. They're working hard, you know. And she goes, but they've got they've got to deal with things that other places don't. And that's what makes Lima Senior special. Because these guys deal with things that other people don't have to deal with. You know? And people don't understand that all the time. You know, our superintendent does. You know, people that work here do. But it takes, it takes you know, a group. It takes some support. It takes coaches that care. You know, it doesn't take one. One coach can't do it. I can't do it. I got to have, I got to have eight other guys, you know, willing to uh, spend the time and hang out and, and be a part of it. You know, so it, it's been a total group effort. I'm, I'm very proud of our school system. You know, all you have to do is come to a basketball game on Friday night and you see the same guys who played football for me. Q is doing a great job with our, our basketball program. You'll see kids in the stands, you'll see a great pep band. You know, you'll see fans there, it'll be a full house. You know, and we had the same thing in football and it's, it's fun to be around. This is a fun school to come to. These guys, when they walk in the, in the halls, are now proud to say they've played sports. You know, they're proud to say they're football players. You know, we got, we got guys going off to college on college scholarships. You know, Ruben's going to Pitt. You know, Jay Thomas has got offers to go. You know, X is going to Michigan. I mean, these are, these are great young men. They're doing it academically. They're doing it in, you know, on the field. You know, we've got a dozen starters coming back on the football team next year. 
You know, eight of those guys are honor roll students. You know, they're, they're kids that are doing it in the classroom. So, you know, things are going the right way that way. I, um, you know, I look over at our stadium. We got a new stadium in there. You know, we've got a new locker room. You know, we got a brand new scoreboard. Next year, the park's gonna be right there at Spartan Stadium. So, you know, it feels good. Our booster club has money. You know, when I got here, I remember our booster club had $5,000. You know, and they were, they, they said, well, you know, you can get some pizza after the game, you know. Now they're buying a concession stand, you know, and they've got money for these young men. Um, Reverend Doug Boquist is, is somebody that I can thank a million times over for the positive influence he is in this community and for Lima Senior. He's Lima Senior's guy, you know. He's been Lima Senior's guy forever. His, his son Josh played middle linebacker for us, and Reverend Boquist is our official photographer of everything we do. These young men can get a picture, they can get, well, they don't get pictures, they get digital printouts or whatever they've got. You know, they've got those type things that they'll have the rest of their lives. You know, and he covers everything we do, good, bad, whatever. You know, those are the type of people we have in this community. And, uh, you know, it makes me real proud. So, like I said, I have no problem talking. Um, let's see, I get, my wife wrote down a couple notes for me. So I got, I got to say a couple things um, before I'm done. All right, you know, I think I covered it. Peggy Ehora is, a, is, another, is another woman who's done a tremendous job for us. And she's a, she's a, she's a big leader here. I, um, what I'm doing is something me and my wife talked about for, you know, roughly 30 years. I, uh, when I started out in Lima, and then I took, a, I took a coaching job in Columbus Grove, and she followed me, and she's the one that makes money. You know, school teachers and football coaches don't make money. My wife is a, a good businesswoman. She makes money. She was able to move, and they were able to keep her at her places, and we've gone all around. And I always promised her, I said, when I get my 30 years in, I said, we'll, we'll go somewhere warm. She wants to go somewhere warm. I've always wanted to go somewhere, you know, and uh, I was ready to do that three years ago, and uh, I, w I, I had a calling to come here, which is the smartest move I ever made, you know. Best decision of my life to come back. And so it worked out. So now I got a chance. We can uh, go get warm somewhere. We're going out to Arizona, and uh, you know, our daughter Sam's out there. She's got, she's got a job. I don't want to teach anymore, but I'd, I'd like to coach football again. You know, I'll, I'll coach football if, if, there's a, if there's a job out there. I don't know if I can get a job out there. If I don't get a job, you know, I don't get a job. Those are breaks. Uh, I can always hang out and find something to do. But it's a, it's a perfect time for us. It's a great time for Lima City Schools to find a, a young coach that is uh, – willing to come in and like I said it's it's not the easiest job in the world it's not one that um, you know that you can just come in and, and do it <coughs> um, but there's no more rewarding job you can have so that's my short statement and if uh, any of you guys got any questions uh, feel free you can ask me whatever you want I'll answer whatever you want you young men go to basketball practice thank you I appreciate it. All right, good. Let's up, fellas. Um, yeah, I can see a lot of changes, you know, um, us as players, you know, it was a lot, it was a better experience for us, you know, um, we were, we were happier in school, we wanted to, you know, we had a reason to go to class, now we had a reason to get better grades, do better things, you know, help out in the community, because now, you know, it's not just our parents were worried about us, it was other people to, outside, of, outside of our parents, outside of, you know, our coaches, our teachers was worried about us, so, you know, it gave us a drive to uh, just work harder, things like that. It made our attitude more positive. You know, we all we all had a positive attitude 
we want no more negative coming out of us or anything like that. Um, talk. Watch out, man. <laughs> All right, that's good. That's good. He's good. Ask him another thing. I'm done. Because then they got to go to practice. I forgot the question. All right, you're good. Okay. Thanks, fellas. I forgot the question. Do anything to miss 10 minutes of practice. Mike, what's your timetable as far as uh, retiring? We you know you retired as a rehire last yeah. year. What's your timetable as far as what the Yeah, I'll, I'm going to stay. I'll be here till the end of your school year. And uh, the only thing that would send me somewhere is if I got a job somewhere. In, in Arizona, they have spring football. And so you – and what they do is they go through uh, baseball and track. And then April – April, at the end of April, the whole month of May is spring football. So, you know, I applied for a couple jobs out there. Well, this basically came up about a week ago. And, um, you know, it was a, we were out there, and we loved it out there. And we decided this would be the, the right place for us to see what we want to do, you know, and go out there. My wife has an opportunity. So I applied a couple jobs. So you never know. I, coming from Ohio, it's, it's a tough sell, but we'll see. There you go. I, I, it's great having Sam. My daughter's out at Grand Canyon University. She is a, uh, she's in grad school, but she's working as like a SID, it's uh, athletic director stuff. And uh, yeah, it's, you know, that was, that's great having her out there. And, you know, it, that's all part of it. I mean, you know, they, you want to be around your family. Exactly. Tom, what's the uh, timetable as far as beginning the coaching search and putting committees and the like together? Uh, we're going to post the job tomorrow. Uh, we've already posted on uh, OHSAA. Uh, we already have a committee in mind, probably about five to six will be on the committee. And we'll, uh, the deadline for applications will be January 30th, and then the uh, month of February, we're going to go through the applications and start the interview process. You probably hit on some of this already, Mike, but how were you able to turn it so fast here? I, the, the thing when I, when, I, when I got the job in Lima, um, you just kind of looked at some things and, and you, you know, they, they said, well, you can't, they won't, guys won't lift weights. They, you know, you can't keep them out. They're, they want to play basketball. And the, the bottom line is they wanted someone to come in and invest in the time and say, this is what you got to do. And, and the bottom line is you got to lift weights. You know, you, you've got to come to practice. You've got to follow the rules. Basically, you raise the expectations. You know, you, you tell them this is what you got. They'll do whatever, whatever you expect them to do and demand them to do. As soon as they started doing that, and as soon as these guys started coming, you know, and those guys are a prime example. Ruben, Ruben and Rico were, were basketball first guys that, you know, when I first got here, they'd go to basketball, and then once in a while they'd hit the weight room or whatever. Well, they started having fun, and then... <laughs> They start seeing a little success. So then they, you tell them, well, if you don't come to practice, you don't get to play. And so then they come to practice. They'll do whatever you ask them to do. If you raise their expectations, they will get it done. And that's what we did. We raised their expectations. We demanded that they come to practice. We told them to get in the weight room. We demanded that they go to class and get their grades. And the big thing is, is respect factor. You know, go through the hallways, proud of what you're doing. And all it just started, well, we had, now, undoubtedly, we had a great group of athletes. But we always have a great group of athletes here in Lima. You know, we always have it. And we'll continue to have it. So I think the fact they just started working, and I put a, a, a great staff together that was there every day for them. The kids knew what to expect. And once you start winning some games, it's contagious. You know, it works out well. With the deep staff that you have, have you recommended anybody? You I recommend all of them. Uh, you know, any one of them that want the job. Hey, like you said, it's, it's one of those that takes some time, you know, and you've, you've got to be willing to, to put it in that way. And, you know, we'll see who wants to get it. And I, 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 I would think that the job will be open throughout, and I think there will be a lot of really good applicants. So, I, you know, if there's someone on my staff that, that really wants it that way, I'm sure they'll be considered. So, but it's, it's one of those jobs that I, I know if I was out – at this time, as a, if I was a 35-year-old guy that wanted to come somewhere where there's great athletes and a good environment and a good 
a good system that way, this is a job I'd definitely look at. And if I came and watched a basketball game, there's no doubt I'd put my application in. Yeah. No, I, the, the thing about coaching football, it, it's funny, the Whitmer guy who, who beat us every year, um, you know, he said, I, I read his quotes, he said, I was a terrible husband, I was a terrible, you know, he, he just said he, he felt like he neglected his family, and it happens, you know, and fortunately, you know, when you're in a situation like me, I got another family, which was great, I inherited another group of 55 guys, and you spend as much time there, but my daughters were gone, you know. And so when you put that kind of time, I could see where he, where he was coming from. In, in Fremont, they had some struggles with some things. I think it's just coincidence. And it was funny because I saw that Monday, and then I saw it yesterday, and I'm thinking, I'm going tomorrow. <laughs> and I go, that's, you know, it's like an epidemic that way. So, I, um, you know, by the way, we beat Fremont every year. We beat... Uh, let's see. Let's go through it all. Saint Fremont. Mm -hmm. St. Francis beat us once. Whitmer and, uh, but we beat St. John's every year. We beat Pickway every year. Clay. We beat Fremont every year. We beat Clay every year. And, and who? Finley. Finley. That's right. Our chief rival. <laughs> yeah. Finley. So, you know, there's five teams that aren't real big fans of us. And they're probably pretty happy today. Uh, it stands out the most. Let's see, what was my favorite game? Man, we had a bunch of good ones. Um, you know, the overtime game a couple years ago, St. John's that first year. I think the Pickwood game, the first win we ever had. Um, if you'd have seen those young men's faces when they finally got the, you know, Eli I can still see Elias, right? You know, we, it, it's my best friend and coaching, Bill Neese, you know, it, okay, and we went to Piqua. And we'd already lost a couple games, and, you know, some things weren't going the right way. And then to see the relief in their faces and the joy, you know, that's just pure joy on those guys' part and my part. You know, we, we just, we love that. You know, and then being in the playoffs, you know, and we've had, we've had a couple crushing losses, you know. So those stick out on you, too. You know, unfortunately, they stick with you. But they, they're all part of it. They don't know anything. They, nobody knew anything till today. Um, Bill, niece, I, we just set up our, our third game next year with Springfield and down, down Dayton area. And I, um, I texted him and asked him about Springfield and everything. And then today he goes, hey, what the heck? You know, you, you did text me and you don't even say anything about it. So I, I, didn't, say, I didn't want anyone to know anything until my, I told my players. I, yeah, I'm sure I, I talked to Scott Pauldy today. You know, he... They, they're always curious as to, you know, why. But those guys, people that know me, if you know me, you know I've been traveling all over the world for the last, <laughs> you know, I, I don't hang out everywhere. You know, I, I like to go and do things that way. So I don't think those guys are too surprised. That's for sure. Head coaching jobs you applied for in Arizona? Yeah, there's, um, in, in the Phoenix area, there is probably six or seven, and they're all, they're all the jobs, but the Mountain View job is, is one that's a, it's a, it's a big time <laughs> job there, and uh, you know, it's one that I apply for, whether you even get interviewed and stuff, you never know, you know, but they're, they have a, they have five or six job openings there, and like I said, they're in spring football and stuff, and I, I just leave, watch Lima Seniors basketball right now, but we'll see. Yeah, been without coaching for 30 years. Yeah. Well, I haven't been out without football, you know, because I just, I, I just wrote off the Browns and the Reds in the past two weeks. But I, I started playing football when I was nine years old, and I've played every season and been a part of it since I was nine. And I'm, I think I'm, what am I, 41, 35, something like that now? Every year since I was nine years old. So I'm sure there'll be something to do with football next year somewhere. <laughs> Not right now. They don't need me. They need something. That's for sure. Mike, you definitely leave the program in a better place than when you were here three years ago. Um, going forward, what would you, do you want to see that tradition and oh. those standards you know, that you've helped maintain last well after Mike Bell has done a memory of my 
see, that's, uh, you know, that's why I came back. I mean, you know, it's, it, 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 this stuff isn't anything to do with me as much as it is with here, with these kids. Um, you know, I, I get the bulk of all the publicity and that kind of stuff, you know, but, you know, this year with Jay Thomas and Reuben Flowers being the uh, co-players of the year, you know, that, that is something that I, if, if kids in elementary school and junior high aren't looking at that going, hey, you know, look at that, that's our Lima senior guys doing that. You know, that, man, that playoff game was great. That, that's gotta carry over, and, that, and that's what I told my players today. I said, um, fellas, you've got to follow through with what we're trying to do. I say, hey, we've, got, we've got a dozen starters back. We got, you know, 56 kids that I, I went through in, in the upper grades, you know, set up to, to go, and then another 25, 30 freshmen, you know. And, and I said, we've started something here that, that is, is outstanding. And you guys don't even know. You don't know. They, the guys who are in that room today, they don't know anything but winning. You know, they're five and five, eight and three, nine and three. So that's their legacy right now, you know. They, they have a winning record and do it next. They're all, their whole career is all they're going to know is what, they, and they, they're not going to remember, you know, five years ago or ten years ago. And so the younger kids, it's got to continue. I mean, I, yeah, I, would, I would be totally crushed if it didn't. And that's why I think it's a perfect time for someone else to come in here, someone that, that, that knows what, what it takes that way, and continue. Because we've got some good young talent, but we've got – like I said, we got things in place with, it, with, with great coaches that way, uh, a great facility, you know, a top schedule, a top league. And so, you know, it better continue, that's for sure. I appreciate that. More of an impact than X's and O's and M's and lots of And as a dad, and as one of the people who cares deeply about this community, I want to thank you for the investment you've made in lives and the impact that's going to go on for a very long time, far off the football field. Well, that, you know, that my, my wife reminds me of that all the time because I, I get flipped with what I say to people, you know, and I'll, I'll say some comment or whatever and she goes you know they're they're actually listening to what you're saying and I'm like really and then today today was a, a good example of that because I you know I, I talked to some guys that are players of mine but but guys I don't really have to you know maybe they're in a different position or whatever and and talking to them I could see how they felt and it really got me to see their reaction you know I hey Ruben those guys I spent all that time with yeah, I, I, I figure that. But, but guys that I, maybe I, I didn't that, that feel that way, you know, that, that's why we do what we do. I mean, that's why, you know, that's why Wes Schrader, Aaron Markley, Justin Hahn are young coaches that way. You know, it, it's the relationships you build with these kids that, you know, make it worthwhile. Corey King played for me at Columbus Grove. Scott Pauldy played for me at Columbus Grove. They both were on the phone with me today. You know, but what I really liked was Barry Blackstone, who was my old coach in Lima, texted me today. And, you know, I, I told him that, and I, I tried to tell the kids today, you know, I was a junior in high school, and we were eight and two, and we had a great season, and our coach left and took all the assistants. And Barry Blackstone came in and was my coach as a senior, and he was great. He's the, he's the best coaching mentor I've ever had. And it, it was fortunate that he came in when he did as a senior year. And I was trying to tell my team and I never got it out. But you know, for me, that was a great experience with him. And I, you know, it's 30 years later and I'm still kind of, he came to our Miami's work game. And I'm still, you know, friends with him and still love to talk to him. So, you know, that's, that's why I'm hoping the same way with these guys. How are the emotions of the kids going to help them? <laughs> um, honestly, they're, they're disappointed, mad, crying, I mean, it's just what you'd expect, but not what you'd hope, for, but, you know, just, just kind of what it, what it was, you know. And, you know, I don't blame them. They, they couldn't really talk to me. Uh, some of them won't talk to me for a couple of days, which I totally understand. Uh, 
I went up and tried to talk to all of them today, and they did a lot of just looking at me and listening. And, you know, I preach a lot, and so they, they, they did some listening, but they really weren't ready to talk to me yet. But they will be. It takes a little while. It takes a little while. We good? All right. Hey, I, like I said, I really appreciate you guys. I appreciate all the coverage you've done for, for, for me all, all the years I've been around. And the fact that, you know, that you're, you're here with Lyman Senior that way, we, we appreciate that because I tell you, we're fun, fun to watch and we'll be fun in the future that way.